Hello, and in this video we'll be working in IED 4.1.7 simulating cam motion. Uh, we'll be using OnShape in this video, so uh, to begin we'll get logged into PLTW and we'll go down to number one and it gives us this uh, automata box we can uh, make a copy of. So as long as you're logged into OnShape, if you're not, you have to log in first uh, and then you can click just make a copy. Uh, I'm just going to name it 4.1. Point seven, and I'm doing it for this video, so I'm naming it video. Uh, that copies that workspace. It gives us this uh, box with the rulers on top, and what's called these top red pieces are what's called filers. They got some guides to keep them in place, and it's got a crank handle on here on the side. Uh, first thing we want to do with this box is add in our cam. So we're going to add in each one of the cams we've already created uh, by insert. It gives us some cams here, but it does not have our parametric settings on these cams. Uh, so you want to find the cams you've already created. Uh, to do that, you're just going to other documents, my on shape. If you create them recently, they should be near the top. Uh, I did not create them recently, so I got to scroll all down and find where I created mine at. Uh, once you find them, uh, you have your different cams. Uh, you can just click on them and place them in. If you want to do all at the same time, that's fine. If you want to just do some of them, it's up to you how you add them. You can always go back and insert more later on. Uh, so when I insert it, I click and then I place it. You can do all of them now. I'm just going to do a couple of them. I got already changed the size on some of these. Uh, so I would put three of them out here for now and then just hit my green check. Uh, next to place these. Uh, cams onto our axle. Uh, we're actually going to use the crank handle as our place to to place them uh, because it's the way that they, they assembled and created this box. Uh, the axle doesn't rotate the same as this crank, uh, so we can make it work using just a crank. Uh, to do that, we're going to use a fasten mate. Uh, you get the hole, so one of the spots inside of your hole. Uh, and as your mate connector, and then you have to come down and make sure you're on the handle. Uh, if you're just on the side of the box or the axle, you're not going to be able to rotate it. So we want to make sure we're on our handle and we come down and get that center point of that axle. Uh, that's going to place it onto the axle, but not in the right location. So next, I'm going to turn to the right view and I want to move it so it's lined up with this power. So I'm going to do an, what's called an offset. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to guess it's going to be about negative 1.25. Uh, I didn't put the whole number. Negative 1.25. Uh, and that lines it up here on the right side. If it's not perfect, you can always adjust your value. I did negative because it's so that blue arrow, the blue Z line in the positive direction to the left. Now I wanted to go right. Uh, once you have it located, you hit your green check, and that locates it into the box. Uh, next, we want it so this arm, this follower can go up and down with it. Uh, so what, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use what's called a tangent mate. So I select my tangent mate. Uh, when I do that, I'm going to rotate it so I can better see. And I'm going to get the edge of my roller. So I'm going to get an edge of my roller. And then I'm going to get the face, that skinny face of my cam. When I do that, my follower should come down to it and touch it. Uh, in this case, it, I clicked the edge of my cam. I didn't get the face, so it did not come down. I want to make sure I get that whole face there. Once I do that, it comes down, uh, and you can hit your green check to accept. Uh, sometimes it has a little issue if you try to click the face up here or if you click the wrong spot. Uh, so you want to make sure you're clicking in the correct location. Uh, if you have a little trouble, go back and retry it. Uh, we hit a green check to accept, and that places it on our axle. Uh, I'm going to rotate my screen back, and right now I'm going to just going to show you if I manually turn, uh, you can see it going up and down on that crank arm. I'm going to reset it close to zero. So one way you can do this is you just manually rotate it uh, every 30 degrees and get those measurements if you're trying to get those measurements. Uh, another way to show that it can animate is by coming over to Crank Revolut. I right-click on that, and I can animate it that way. So I can animate. I like to do a loop so it just continues on. Uh, you can do reciprocating as well, though. When we do this, we hit play, and you can see it move up and down. You can watch it on the ruler and see that cam move up and down, causing that file to move up and down. Uh, so that's how we do it with the eccentric cam. Uh, once you do one cam, you can add your next cam in. 
I usually it's useful to check and make sure the first one works. If you put all four in and then something doesn't work, uh, then it's a little more work to troubleshoot which one's not working. So now that we know that one's working, you can move on to our next one. Uh, before I move on though, I'm going to show you while I'm in here, I can change the size by right clicking on it and I can change configuration. So right now I'm at 2 inches. Maybe I want to make it a little bit smaller and change it to 1.5 inches. I change that, I hit generate, and it's going to change the size of my cam. You can see it gets smaller there. Maybe I want to make it a little bigger. Again, same process. You just change it. I'm going to return it back to my 2 and hit generate. And that's going to change the size of your cam. So if you need to test different sizes, uh, you, that's how you test different sizes of your cam. Uh, next, I'm going to look at my hex cam because there's a little uh, nuance with uh, hex cam and snare cam. Uh, things with those 90 degree angles we want to look at. Uh, so overall, putting it on is going to be the same basic concept. Fasten mate, get the center of your hole, and then... Get the crank arm, make sure you're on the arm, and get the center where the axle is. Again, I'm just changing to my right view. It looks like it's about an inch farther, so on my offset, now I'm going to do negative 2.25 in it. And that looks like it's lined up, so that should work. Hit our green check to accept. Uh, but this time, if I try to do a tangent mate without doing any adjustments to my cam, I'm going to run into some issues. I've already made those adjustments on mine. You probably can't see it until we zoom in. Uh, but to show you how to make those adjustments, I'm going to go right click and edit in context. So that allows me to edit this cam while still being in this box and adjusting it. Uh, so you can kind of see over here, if you look at my uh, work summary, I uh, did a fillet. On each one of these uh, 90 degree, or in this case, they're not 90 degrees, each one of these uh, intercept, interception of straight lines. Uh, so all I did was do a fillet, and I, it's a really, really small fillet at 0 0.01, and that just creates a rounded edge for it. So anytime, on any other cam, so like the hex cam for sure, the snare cam for sure, uh, you will have to add some fillets for on shape to follow your cam. So I've, I've already done it, so I can green check, I can create version and go to assembly. Since it didn't change, there's no pop-up menu, but if you change it, there's a pop-up, and all you have to do is hit create, and it updates that version. Uh, from there, it's the same concept as on my ex eccentric cam. So I'm just going to do a tangent mate, rotate it up, click on the edge. Uh, I wanted the edge, so click on the edge, and then click on the face, and that brings it down. Hit our green check to accept, and that gives us our hex cam. Uh, come back up, and pair cam should be able to do the same way. I'm going to insert other documents, and I'm going to insert my uh, snare cam to show you a little with that one. So i got to scroll all the way down and find my snare cam. On the snare cam, uh, it's uh, just like we saw with our... Uh, Hex cam, you do have to make some adjustments. So I got to find where I got my snare cam at. I'll put it on, and you can see I've made some adjustments to it already. Uh, so I'm going to green check, and I'll right click on it and edit in context. Uh, when I open it up, you can see uh, there's going to be, I believe, three different fillets over here. Uh, first one, if I look at it, is just a 0.01, and what I because of the way we made it, each one of these locations, I just did a 0.01. It doesn't look like it's a need to fill it there, uh, but for some reason it did, so we just did that so it was able to rotate around. Uh, then where that snare part is, where it has that steep drop off, uh, we had to round off those edges as well. So in this case, I just did 0.25 on them, it looks like. Uh, again, it can be a small fillet. As long as it's able to track it and follow it around is what we're looking for. Uh, I think I did 0.25 on the other one to, if I did one that way. Uh, so again, for those uh, where well, you had intersections of straight lines, you have to fill it uh, so it can follow with that tangent constraint. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be a lot more difficult to uh, set up your constraints there. Uh, so hopefully this helps you to set up your automata box and test your cams. Uh, in this case, I'm having you test uh, two different sizes of each cam and each 30 degrees. So to get each 30 degree, you just rotate it, move your handle 30 degrees, 30 more degrees, 
each time you move it, come over and read the ruler. Uh, to read the ruler, there's two ways. You can actually just look at what the ruler says. Or if you want to use the tape measure on here and get more exact value, uh, the way you can do that is I'll zoom in. You click the top of your box. And then you click on the top of your file rod. So I get the top of that, I get the top of my box, and it tells me that exact distance between those two. So if I look at the ruler, it should match up. It's right above 2, and it tells me 2.044. Uh, then if you do go to do your next one, you got to unclick what you clicked, and then click your next selection. Uh, so hopefully this helps you uh, to set up your box so you can uh, get your measurements for how these different camps go. So then when I move it, it keeps my new measurement. So as I move my crank on to different values, I can get what those values without having to change my view even. I can go to 60 degrees and see 2.008. And then I move to 90 and read what it is. Just make sure you add that mark. I can get those values very quickly rotating around. Once you have your chart filled out, change the size of the cam. Again, just right click, change configuration. Uh, so hopefully this helps you to complete uh, uh, 4.1.7. Thank you and good luck.